Hey there, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can design a database application with the help of Visual Basic. So this is going to be a very basic tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to add a database grid view in your VB.NET application. Let's first create a new project. Select Windows Forms application, choose the name of your choice and click on OK. This will open up a blank form onto which we are going to drop data grid view. Okay, so let's first check database explorer here in order to connect to database it needs to exist first so if it isn't available then vb.net offers you a choice to create one you can right click on data connections and click on add connection or select this icon from which it will ask you to create a connection so this is for creating an existing database connection to your form. So let's go to simple way, drop this data grid view on your form. Okay, now here you will find that it has options to connect to data source. Now click on add project data source. This will open up a dialog box where you get to choose where your data is from. Is it a database, service or object? Click on database and click on next. Then what type of database model you want to use? Is it data set or entity model? Click on next. Here you get to choose the connection type. If it is let's say ms access database then you can select that but right now we don't have any active connection so we are forced to use new connection here you can change the data source when you click on change data source you get an option for access sql server compact 3.5 sql server database file i'm choosing SQL Server Compact 3.5 and there is also a provider for the same so we are going to use this connection okay after that it will ask you to have a name for your database let's have sales item as our database name after that click on create Okay. there should be no password no encryption for me right now and I'm going to just click on OK are you sure you want to create a database without password protection click on yes and this will item will be created in your documents so here you will find a file dot stf here so when you go to my documents you will find that file here cells item dot stf close this one and click on ok now this created database connection here and you can go ahead and click on next connection you selected is a local data file that is not in the current project so it will ask us to copy it to the project and modify the connection click on yes now it will ask to choose connection string so keep this name as is but do remember that this is very long connection string name now there are no database object because we haven't created any data set so just click on finish 
the next step will be to create a table okay so you can right click here or go to the database explorer here you find your data connection here you see tables and replication so there is nothing in table so right click and type create table in this table editor you will find column name start with invoice id make sure it is integer okay length should be up to four it's okay null should not be allowed unique should be yes primary key should be yes and then next one should be item where we are going to type the name of our item should be where care or you can simply have text I'm going to keep nwire care length should be up to 100 allow nulls okay unique okay let's keep it default primary key no then I'm going to go for cost of the item here I'm going for numeric data so I'm going to choose integer so restricting to 4 allow nulls yes unique no primary key no next would be quantity let's go for integer let's keep rest of the others as is you can have allow nulls set to no so that no blank data will be added okay keep it unique as no you can have multiple items of same name that's okay now identity this these are the properties for your data table so let's see if you can have identity increment you can have identity seed which these are the properties that we are not going to use right now okay so this is our new table and i'm going to click on ok so that all these values will be added into our table out of which you know i said it will be primary key and we're expecting it to be unique okay so let's name this cells item or just cells click on ok then this added cells table here we have our columns in ID, item cost and quantity okay so let's go back to our data source and project data source you'll find So let's just save this one and click on show data table to check the values here. So right now there are no values. I'm going to add one. So item should be let's say pen cost to quantity three. After hitting enter, four and four. For this, let's keep it two as we haven't used any auto increment feature. Or here, let's go with three. Let's go for sharpener thirty-three. Uh, let's say two and some random number again so this is the default data that is being stored here okay 
you can navigate from these buttons so let's click on refresh to refresh this table now let's check out table schema so this is our table schema and as you can see this is what we have in table as well let's go back to form design and delete our grid view and save it now what we are going to do is we are going to drop a new data grid view and this time I'm going to give it a source okay click on next select tables and now I'm going to hit finish now this added proper table here Now let's just save this one and run the form as you can see our current form has three entries that I have added into it and you can also go for adding the fourth one let's say carbon pepper go for two cost and seven this added data however in some of the cases this data doesn't directly get added into our database unless we make the query explicitly so if you check it by closing the form if we go to the table properties in database explorer you may not find fourth entry here so in the future tutorials I will show you how to edit add and delete the data on our data grid view component so this is a basic tutorial on how you can make connection with SQL database with the help of VB.net I hope you find this tutorial helpful I will see you in the next tutorial